This is a demonstration of the new parameter tables inside feature templates. Uh, this uh, was added in the most recent version of NX, NX 22.12, the December release at the end of 22. Uh, and so uh, let's dive in. <laughs> so this is uh, obviously a little valve manifold assembly here. We have uh, three units here in the center that are the same. And so we'll see here that uh, as we add some ports to one of these uh, parts here. Those ports will, will be duplicated here in the other instances of that same part. Uh, so we have three of these here in the, in the middle of this assembly. Okay, so let's go take a look at how feature templates play into this. Um, I'm going to come grab one of these feature templates here that is an SAE port down here that has a bunch of PMI on it. And I'm going to add that to this part. Uh, in this part, I'm actually going to turn on a couple of, of datum coordinate systems in here that we'll use for positioning. And we can go back to the reuse library here. So as I bring in this port, um, you'll see a couple of things here that are interesting. Um, it's going to use a datum coordinate system here for positioning, of course, and we'll, we'll give it a planar face and a body to attach to. The standard sizes right here, this is the, the way you're going to see the result of a parameter table or the output or the selection of a uh, configuration from a parameter table inside a feature template dialog. Uh, so there are a bunch of size codes for this particular uh, SAE port, and we can choose one of those here in the option menu. And this is going to set uh, a set of roughly a dozen expressions for us that will size this particular port. Uh, and we'll look more at this parameter table in just a minute. Uh, but this is how we're going to choose one of the, the configurations that's in that parameter table uh, to put into this specific model. Again, at the location and body that we've specified here. So as we do this, we can go ahead and say, OK, this is going to add that port now inside our model with uh, a bunch of PMI in this case. Uh, you see it's brought that PMI in in all three of those. We're seeing all three instances of this, this uh, part. And, um, and, and we can do this kind of definition here uh, if we want to, right? Now, one consideration, this particular feature is one that's very standards-driven. And because it's very standards-driven, there's a standards document that describes exactly how this feature works. And so we might choose to, to present it like this. Uh, and there's another choice here for, for how to present this. I'm going to undo this once. And then let's go put in this other version of the same, this same port. This is the exact same geometry in this case. But uh, we're going to represent this just a little differently. So let me attach it there. We have our same size code selection here. Uh, in this case, actually in the other one, we had this as well. There's a legend at the top with a, an image of what some of these parameters mean. And, and here, there's a link to the standards document itself. And, and so as we launch this, this is going to bring up uh, on another monitor <laughs> our actual standards document here, right? And, and we'll see, uh, again, a, a drawing cross-section of our, of our port uh, along with those standard parameters that we just described. And this standard has, of course, that full table of all of the data defining uh, the various, various dimensions. Uh, thread spec and things like that that are also part of this particular um, standard as well as a bunch of notes, right? So again, we can link right to that spec document from inside a, a feature template dialog, and that's very handy. Um, in this particular one, as we put it in there, we're going to have a little different annotation here, right? So instead of putting a full um, set of PMI, replicating all of the PMI on the model itself, this particular one I've chosen to just put a label out there, indicates the standard, what it is, uh, this basic size code. Um, stuck the, the thread spec out there just for, for reference. <laughs> you can include that or not. But, uh, but this is another way to kind of document key features like this that may be standards driven, right? Um, if I put in a second one of these down here at uh, this lower location, uh, then for instance, uh, we would have a couple of these and they've each got a, an annotation out there, right? Now, once the annotations are in the model here, they're just like any other PMI. So we could come here, for instance, and delete, say, just that annotation for the bottom port that will keep the rest of this here. Uh, and then we might come in, for instance, and come to the original um, uh, annotation here for the first one. 
and, and edit this and, and maybe come in and put in a second leader here, right? So we can come in and add a terminating object here for this leader that's going to go put a point on curve down maybe at the on this, this second one, right? And so that would leave us with with uh, this kind of, oops, I've got a spare up there, huh? Uh, so we can come back and edit this again. Uh, let's come back and look at our our uh, these guys. Let's take this leader and, and delete that leader. There we go. Good. So so now we've got, say, two leaders coming off of, of one annotation, and that's uh, just another way to represent this, right? Good. So again, this is uh, feature templates here. We're, we're driving this with the, the table. Uh, let's go look at that parameter table. So if we go and open one of these original definitions, we'll see that we've got uh, a simple definition here, right? This one's in a block. This one has our node on it. Uh, cross section, of course, represented there to, to show this. Uh, this is just a clipped um, section view at the moment, right? Showing that. And so we'll square that up and let's go look at our parameter table, right? Inside this part here, we've got, again, uh, the standard table in here and then a bunch of science codes. And each of these is a configuration. And we can switch between these in a parameter table. The easiest way to change these here is by double clicking these, right? And that'll bring up the parameters of the uh, newest, uh, the one that you just selected. Uh, that's the tiny one. <laughs> and this is the big guy right down here. Um, that size 10 is kind of where we, we actually put it in. Um, and this table, of course, if we come and edit this particular one, is going to show us, uh, again, that set of about a dozen parameters that are actually driving the shape out there. Um, there may be an, the expression name and parameter label, I think, are the same on this particular model. These labels can be a more descriptive name if you want them to be. Uh, but they'll link to a particular expression. We'll have a current value, of course, that we're looking at. But then each column out here is one of these configurations uh, in our parameter table. And again, we can activate these from this context as well if we want to and uh, and see those those uh, update there as well. And again, the, it'll transfer a, a current value to the, the current value column here, okay? So there's a six, seven, eight, nine, ten. back to there, for instance, and, uh, and we see how those work, okay? So again, we're taking this table and embedding it inside the feature template. As we instantiate that feature template, this, uh, this table will come along for the ride. And uh, we'll live inside the part here, of course, so that we can we can continue to make updates to that feature template. Okay, pretty cool. So uh, let me show you one more example of this here. Let me close these uh, close these parts. Let me close uh, these parts here, and let's open up this guy. So this is a fun little assembly from many years ago, and. Uh, this is a clamp here, of course, that's that's going to get used in, in for instance, some automotive body uh, tooling design, and uh, and we've got a nice little a nice little mechanism here. There's a little six bar mechanism, of course, that that drives this. Uh, I like the little toggle position that this comes to here, where it, it goes over center, and uh, and creates kind of a lock position there as it closes. But anyway. Uh, nice little assembly. Um, characteristic of these is this bolt pattern right here. This is what we're going to be looking at. Um, what's happening here is, of course, we've got a standard riser here, and, and we've got a, a plate on the back. The plate on the back has some threaded holes for, for these guys. But, uh, but these locating pins here are doing the positioning job here. These are the most precise uh, aspect of this, this connection. Some very precisely positioned holes there and, and holes in the back here as well. That are going to uh, locate this, and then these these uh, uh, socket head cap screws here are located a little less accurately, right? And uh, and uh, and hold things together, of course. Uh, so this this kind of pattern is very very common here with four bolts, two locating pins. Uh, we might want to put one of these down here at the bottom here as well, for instance. Okay. And so I might make this the work part out there. And again, from my reuse library, I could grab, for instance, a bracket hole pattern and bring out that hole pattern uh, and use this to, uh, to instantiate it. So I'm going to locate it there with that guy and attach it to this body. And, and in this pattern, you can see what we have here are um, the ability to do custom spacing like this with 40 by 50 pattern. And we can, we can go ahead and take a look at that one. Uh, that's going to look like that, which is not exactly what we're after. <laughs> so we can edit this feature 
and come back again, of course, to the feature template dialog. And uh, if we want to, there's some standard patterns here, right? You could go grab, a, say, a 50 by 60 and see what that looks like. That's close. Um, in fact, what we're going to use here is a 60 by 60. So let's go grab that one. Um, if there are different hole sizes, so standard, standard sizes we want to use, this is actually another parameter table here that's going to drive uh, the size of all of the locating pins and the, the fastener holes back here, the size of the, the, the counter bores and so forth that go with those and, uh, and drive all of those uh, related parameters that are related to the whole options down here. Okay. So we change that uh, again, parameter table down here for the, for the whole options and so forth. Uh, this is an independent parameter table from this one that's being used for the standard patterns up here. So we can have multiple parameter tables in the same part, multiple parameters that we bring into the same uh, template here as well and drive those independently like we're doing here. Okay. This bottom one here, you see we've got counter bores, we've got locating pins and the image at the top here that, that actually can be responsive to what we're doing down below, right? We're actually toggling here as we toggle this, we're we're swapping in a different image up here above. So there are kind of four images here, one with or without locating pins and, and one with or without counter bores up there. And uh, and we can do that kind of stuff with, with feature template dialogues here, which is pretty pretty powerful. In this case here, we're, uh, we're going after a configuration where we've got the socket head cap screw and the lock washer just out on the surface there. So for instance, we may not need the counter bores in this case. Uh, we do want the locating pins and, and that'll be the, the, the right uh, pattern for us there in this case. Okay. So it's again, an example of um, another feature template here using parameter tables. Uh, in this case, two different parameter tables at the same time. Uh, you'll notice that when we choose none on this top one here, that we were lighting up a couple of uh, additional inputs here to do a custom uh, one of those. We can choose to include this or not include this uh, as we uh, expose the, the parameter table to the dialog. Uh, in this case, I've chosen to include it here so that we can do a custom size. Uh, on this one, I chose not to include the none because uh, we don't want people making up a new bolt, <laughs> right? So, uh, good. Uh, that's uh, what I wanted to show you on that one, and I hope you find that useful.